All right, well, thanks, Jeremy, for joining us. Uh, Jeremy's our product manager for, uh, for the managed team. Uh, so, Jeremy, without further ado, I'll turn things over to you and let you talk a little bit about um, the uh, uh, GitLab Manage and, and other things you're interested in discussing with the community members. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks a lot, Ray. I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so I'm Jeremy Watson. I'm the product manager for Manage here at GitLab. I'm going to share my screen and chat through um, Manage at a high level um, in terms of what the stage at GitLab tries to accomplish. Um, talk through kind of the, the stage itself, some of our goals and priorities for the, for, the, for the core team. And then I can talk through kind of uh, how you can help contribute in some issues that I kind of like to highlight. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So Manage is interesting because it's one of the few stages here at GitLab that spans across the entire DevOps lifecycle. So right now I'm looking at um, inside the GitLab handbook, the categories page uh, in, our pro in the product section of our handbook. I'm just looking at this diagram here, which kind of outlines how we think about DevOps here at GitLab. So whereas you see that like, there's very specific stages like plan, create, release, and configure that deal with like very specific areas of the DevOps lifecycle, we have several stages which manages one of one of which that span the across the entire lifecycle really, and and that's what manage is all about. Like manage is kind of the, the foundational piece to GitLab that covers all the common components that like we that instances need to be successful, as well as like the kind of high level analytics about how your instance is performing, giving you like powerful configuration that enables you to set up your instance kind of how you want with powerful controls and analytics that allow you to know what's going on. Um, so that's really what manage is all about. It's about the managing your instance. Um, and this is something that is that we think about in kind of two high level goals uh, with the team, which is helping organizations really prosper and do well with the configuration analytics that they really need, um, as well as like removing barriers to finding value and helping users really find solutions to problems that GitLab helps solve. So, you know, like I mentioned, Manage covers like a lot of different areas. It covers analytics, covers um, configuration in the form of authentication, authorization. Um, and it covers uh, a lot of those common components that you can see here on the back to the categories page that's in this other functionality and manage. And that's user management, permissions, projects, groups, profiles, navigation, and admin area. So again, you know, manage covers this, this wide kind of area inside the product. And I want to kind of try, try to help that break that down for the community in terms of, you know, what is it that this team is working on? What are our priorities and kind of how you can really help um, kind of be a part of that? So I'm going to flip back to the, the product vision for Manage. So the page here that I'm looking at is the direction page that's specific to Manage. Um, and I'll continue talking through this a little bit. So, you know, the themes that we really work on, and you can kind of take a look at this video here on our direction page to get a little deeper look in terms of like what we're working on uh, over the next, you know, three months or so, is really like helping instances operate at scale providing instances with powerful analytics, security, and also increasing the lovability of our product as a whole. So when it comes to operating at scale, we want to try to take and solve those problems that instances typically run into when they you know, reach large, large uh, you know, scale when they're dealing with hundreds and thousands of members on their instance, where things become harder to manage, where you need um, better coverage on our APIs, where automation becomes a greater need, and where manual tasks just simply start to break down. So, um, you know, this, this definitely involves better authentication, um, better uh, eval uh, evolution of our APIs and how we handle things like personal access tokens and, and application scoping. Um, and then how for EE, how they manage, how um, instances manage spending uh, with, our, with our licensing model. You know, we also want to really improve the way the analytics work at GitLab. Um, we see that cycle analytics is an opportunity for instances to really understand kind of how their instances is operating and how fast they're shipping software, and which is something that's tremendously relevant for core. We really want to get, the, you know, like take large steps forward in our in our analytics and the insights that we're able to deliver there, as well as increase the uh, you know the security of instances by giving them like uh, not only better. Um, levers for um, being able to enforce powerful security for their users, but also being able to enforce strong access controls like at the group level. So they're only able to kind of give uh, access to, to specific users and entities that they, that they want to their instance. And then kind of lastly, we're just interested in building on, you know, the overall lovability of the product. 
Um, we don't want something that is just merely functionally complete with you know lots of configuration that is like challenging to manage, but ultimately very um, but, but, but like has high utility value. We want to create an unbeatable experience that ultimately like customers and users really really love. So this is all you know a particular area that I'm excited about um, and looking to the community's help not only for their feedback in terms of like what it is that we can do to. Um, to make GitLab something that you 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 really really love to stand off the rough edges and uh, you know in the areas of church that, that tend to frustrate users, uh, but also to highlight some areas in which that we can um, that, that that we would love love the community's help and guidance on. So, in terms of like what the team itself is working on, the current focus um, that we're kind of like thinking about is really helping authentication right now get better. Um, the team uh, the managed team, um, which is a team of, of about five uh, back-end developers and four front-end developers, currently working on uh, improving authentication, especially in the form of SSO. Um, we'll also start working on uh, inactive user management and being able to manage your, the users on your instance and understand their activity levels better. Um, we'll also work on um, a better comprehensive audit log so you understand what's going on in your instance more. Um, better access controls, and then analytics improvements um, that I that I kind of talked to a little bit earlier. Um, also relevance to kind of like this lovability theme is going to be our work on new onboarding, which we're excited to kind of, we're starting to explore right now. So how can we help users kind of get started faster um, on a GitLab instance? Um, how can we create like a relevant smart dashboard for you so that when you hit like your instance's homepage, you're immediately seeing relevant information in terms of like what it is that you need to do and um, you know what relevant activity has taken place on the instance. It's important for you to be aware of. Um, and then and then redesigning core um, experiences at GitLab, like the project uh, overview page and the group uh, and the group overview page. So a lot of exciting stuff that the team is working on, and we clearly have our hands full. So I think that you know the priorities that, that we have are, are definitely relevant to both CE and EE uh, users and customers. And I really wanted to highlight some areas that we wanted to, that we think are really, really important for us to um, focus on in the future. But thus far, we just, it's been a real challenge for us to make time for. Um, so the first one I'll kind of mention and highlight is um, one thing that, that's, that's been a challenge for me as a product manager and for the team to kind of make time for has been, again, like iterating on some of those core experiences that customers you know, typically struggle with and typically affects like the, the, the core user experience and livability of the product. And the first one I'll talk to is kind of being able to share private projects. And this is like something that, that customers will, and users will typically struggle with because they will have a pro private project on gitlab.com. And in order to share that with someone who's an external party, they, that customer, that person needs to first register for, the, for that GitLab instance for gitlab.com. Um, and then at that point, the uh, the private project can be shared with that member. But this is kind of a clumsy, you know, awkward workflow. And generally what people want to do is they just want to be able to generate a URL, share it with different people, and then have those individuals be able to use that URL to view their code. So we want to, we want to introduce this by leveraging our existing invite flow where you can invite an existing member of the instance to go ahead and, and pull them into the project. But at the moment, you can't do that with users that aren't ex are existing members. And we want to be able to extend that here. So this issue here, um, which I would love either feedback or contribution for, um, is extending that existing uh, invite flow so that now you can invite mem uh, that it, it, that invite URL is now utilizable by any kind of, by any member who is not already on the GitLab instance. So a project or group owner should be able to generate an invite URL from the members page. They should then be able to go ahead and share that with others. And even if that user is not already like a, an existing member on that instance, they should be able to use that invite URL, join through, a sign, through our sign up flow, and then immediately be added to that project or group at like a defined uh, membership level. So this is something that like the community has been really excited about. This is something we would love to get um, to get into GitLab, and we consider this like a big step forward for for being able to to make private projects more widely shareable and and, and usable by uh, by members. So we're excited. We're excited for this one. This is one I definitely wanted to highlight. From there, there's a couple others that I'm that I'm really excited to talk about, and one is pin projects. Um, one we've had a design um, ready for some time that 
iterated on the on the profile page for users. And at the moment, like what people want to really want to do with their profile page is they also want to use it to highlight particular projects and areas that they're really excited about. And the the problem is is that you can't do that right now. Like an external, like someone who is an external viewer, like clicks on your profile and you know they they see the, the profiles, your your profile and the projects that are in your profile. Uh, kind of sorted by by last activity, which isn't always like how we want to be able to to, to highlight them. So we want to give users the ability to, to to pin certain projects by highlighting this by servicing this kind of pin object on mouse over, and being able to click on that and being able to pin that uh, that particular project to your profile, so that when anyone sees clicks on your profile, they're able to see those. Um, those projects um, immediately and be able to understand which projects are most important to you and which you want to highlight in your personal timeline. So um, this is one that we're very excited about. Um, again, one of those that you know the community is excited about, we think this would be a great addition to GitLab, but we have thus far haven't been able to get to it. And right now it's sitting with a with a Q2 milestone. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know it's it's one that we're still struggling to find time for. Additionally, we want to add pins to both the projects uh, to the group's overview page. So one of our designers and manage, Mate, has created a really, really compelling uh, future vision for where we want, would like the, the group's overview page to go. So you can see here, this is kind of the, the final kind of version, our vision of where we'd like it to go. We see a kind of a seven days overview of like what is happening in the group, um, like a little spark line of like the last seven days of activity on the, in the group. And then we also have this, this container here, which kind of highlights some of the top projects that we want to, to highlight within that group. Um, these, this is another area where pins really help. So these are actually just pins where you can pin certain projects and certain subgroups to the overview page or to highlight their significance. So you know, when a newcomer who's coming into your organization, your open source project or your, uh, or your company clicks on the group, they can immediately see what, what projects and which subgroups are most relevant to, to whatever that group is trying to accomplish. So, you know, this is something that's not always clear right now. The group overview page is kind of sorted by last graded or last activity, and like we are, it's, it's not really clear in terms of like what the group is trying to accomplish. So we want to make that very clear, and we want to be able to add pin groups and subgroups to the, uh, to the group overview page in order to make that clear, um, in order to give a, the group owner a, uh, a clear and, and obvious way to kind of customize what people kind of what where you want to where you want to direct folks whenever they are clicking and viewing on your your group overview page. So, adding this this is a this is a completed design that's kind of it's kind of ready. And once again, you know it it uh, it's something that we've struggled to make time for and manage. So, so those are, so those are the three issues that I wanted to highlight: the uh, the share private project via URL pin projects on user overview page, and then finally pins and projects uh, and subgroups within the group overview page. Really excited about all these. We really think this is going to make a great addition to GitLab. Um, and we'd love either your contributions or your feedback in terms of how we can execute on these features and make them successful. Lastly, what I'm going to leave you with is kind of my favorite, um, is a couple, two kind of words on community contributions. The first is one thing that I like to do is I like to be able to sort uh, to keep priority labels on high value and contributions that like are very important for manage as like a stage and a team, but stuff that we just haven't been able to get to. And so the, the, the query that I really love to use is, is, is sorting the uh, sorting CE by accepting merge requests, P2 and manage. So P2 is a label that we use at GitLab to be able to signify high importance issues where P1 is like critical. We have to drop everything and do it immediately down to P4, which is, you know, it's a very, it's a nice to have. So P2s are, you know, issues that are very significant, ones that we maybe not ha haven't had a chance to get to yet, and sorting by milestone due date. So these are issues that like are open for community contributions and accepting merge requests, but the milestone is kind of distant. They're either in the, in a future quarter or they're in the backlog or they don't have a specific milestone. Um, and these are the ones that we would either love to focus the communities effort on in terms of feedback and how we can make these successful for you, or uh, we would welcome a community contribution um, to see how we, can, how we can get those into GitLab. Um, the second issue that I'll, that I'll talk about is, if you see an issue that you're excited about and that you are, you know, you're excited to move forward with, um, feel free to signal on the issue that you're interested in it, even if the issue isn't necessarily complete or there's still open issues in the description. 
um, you know, I or someone else from the from the GitLab team are more than happy to start moving the, the to answer some of those unanswered questions and move the design forward if one is needed. Um, if someone from the community is really excited about picking it up, so um, so those are the kind of the two ish, two two takeaways I wanted to leave you with as I uh, as I shut up for here for now. Which is number one, you know, this is a great way to kind of find high value community contributions to get that where that we'd be welcoming. And then number two is, you know, even if you see an issue, regardless of the of the of the labels, if it has accepting merge requests on it, even if there are open questions, you know, feel free to to at mention me um, into the issue, and we can kind of discuss uh, how we answer those questions. So um, I'll leave it there for now. But uh, you know, excited to kick the hackathon off, and uh, I hope uh, you know you can direct any future questions about manage to me. Uh, either in GitLab or by email, and my contact information is here uh, on the direction page, here at the top of this page. So uh, excited to excited to work with y'all. Well, thanks, Jeremy. That was perfect. You, uh, I think you like. Uh, I was about to ask you a question about how people should find issues, but you already addressed that. So definitely appreciate that. And and the first issue regarding share private project via URL, I think that's one of the issues that we highlighted for the hackathon uh, that's um, so if people uh, tackle that issue uh, people will be eligible for the extra prize and it looked like there was some discussion this far uh, this even a couple of days ago uh, so there are definitely interest from the community members but it's still waiting for it to be picked up and hopefully somebody will be able to uh, tackle that and yeah definitely appreciate your insight and not not only in terms of what uh, what manages, but what your priorities for for the rest of the year. So I'm sure. That yeah, be yeah, yeah. The uh, I'm excited about the share private project issue. It's 157 yeah. votes, which is which is a ton. So there's clearly right. a lot of interest in the community and a lot of people who are really excited about this. Um, yeah. And uh, on the information that I just shared in this video, I think the best uh, single source of truth is going to be the manage direction page. So yep. um, I, you know, the, all the information that I just shared in this video, including the, you know, the, the two takeaways at the end on, in terms of like how to find issues and also, you know, how to kind of direct your interest. If you're interested in, a, in an issue with some unanswered questions, I'll be adding that page to the, to the direction page in a merge request. Um, so continue to keep an eye on that page and, uh, you know, open a merge request. If you feel like there's, there's unanswered questions, we could be doing a better job at. So uh, yeah. anyone can contribute. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I don't think I have any questions. That David, were you, was there anything else that you wanted to ask or you wanted to point yeah. out? But, yeah, I had to, uh, have a couple of questions for, for Jeremy um, related to um, priorities and, um, and um, community needs as well. Um, so you've mentioned that uh, sometimes uh, one of the things that you, um, that you use for measuring um, um, not measuring, but uh, having a better idea of what uh, what features are, are, are popular, or feature requests are popular, are the uh, thumbs up, uh, for instance. So, um, in the I'm asking this question in the context of, um, of a couple of open source projects uh, who I've been working with. They are uh, intending to migrate uh, to migrate to GitLab. Um, there are a few uh, issues that are interesting to to them, um, and they're generally on the uh, on they are they're, they're generally using GitLab CE. Um, so, with this context, um, if they um, feel that um, they can uh, contribute uh, in raising the priority to, uh, to a particular issue, um, what's the best way for them to do, it, to do it? Is it just uh, a thumbs up or is it just a matter of um, exposing their case uh, on, the, uh, on the issue? Uh, how does it work best for you, uh, for your team to, to, to manage those requests um, and priorities? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. So, you know, as you as you kind of um, previewed, it's it's a combination of everything. So, thumbs up are definitely a, you know a really clear quantitative um, input in terms of like how important something is to the community. But I think in those cases where you you have like a large open source project that it like needs like a couple of issues in order for it to make it to make GitLab a viable solution for them. Um, you know, it has to be both. It has to be both. A, you know, you know, ideally a thumbs up, but also um, a comment in the issue. Um, specifically so that you know, the relevant product manager is aware of like their needs. Um, you know, again, you know, that doesn't mean that we're, that we'll have, that we'll have the bandwidth, the ability to get to things right away. But I think that, you know, if there is you know, maybe two or three issues for a large open source project um, to make GitLab viable, like we, um, we should at least be aware of it. So I think the best way that I've seen is just to have, you know, someone from that project 
comment on the issue, um, you know, at, ideally at mention the relevant product manager. So myself for issues that are related that have a, a managed label on them, um, and then be able to, um, you know, articulate all the issues that are that are relevant to that to that um, to that open source org. Um, you know, the, the, so it's the, the, the issue is not, is not only being aware of like the issues, but also the importance to that particular organization so that we have like, you know, if we decide to ship one thing, you know, that's not the, the end all solution. We also have to ship, you know, issues B, 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 C, and D as well. So, um, so, you know, in order to answer your question, it's, it's both, it's both the upvotes help, but also I think that additional context in terms of like what the organization needs and making sure the product manager is aware and can prioritize accordingly. I think that's the key. Excellent, makes sense. Thank you. Um, I have another one related, uh, or somehow related, uh, and again with the same context, uh, context um, an open source project um, um, requesting a feature, but this is a feature, a feature that's already implemented, and it's uh, it's on uh, it's on EE. Um, generally, uh, when I talk to these projects, I set the expectations that uh, we have this process for, for stewardship, where it's, it is possible to request a feature to be backported, but um, it's something that uh, that requires a careful discussion as well, because uh, it implies as well that uh, we might be losing value um, as, uh, as well. Um, would, would your feedback be for uh, so, uh, such open, uh, open source projects to start such a discussion uh, to uh, to uh, to backport a prior uh, sorry backport a feature from EE to CE? I think that's a great question. So the, I think the the best, uh, I think the, the, my recommendation would be to start an issue um, specifically requesting that feature be backported down to CE. Um, you know, I'm like there is a so I'm I'm just taking a quick look through our product um, the product section of our handbook to try to find the section where we talk about moving issues to core. But um, what we do in the background is you know um so david like, like as you said it's something that we have to be very careful about like ultimately like moving issue like features to core is generally a one-way door we generally will you know move features down but we will never move features up in gitlab so you know it's very typical for us to move a feature from starter or premium or ultimate down to core but i don't recall ever in gitlab us moving a feature from core to a paid tier so with that in mind it is kind of a one-way door so we want to make sure that we're doing that um, in a very mindful way that's that advances the stewardship of the product but also is something that uh that 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 we're aware of at least the business value of that feature so um, when when so again, I recommend that users kind of start by creating an issue in CE and trying to um, and trying to start the conversation there and making sure the relevant product manager is aware of the need and why specifically this deserve, this should be kind of in core and what problem it solves for that user. And the best the best issues that I've seen kind of really articulate like this is why it's important to us. Here's our workflow without it, and here's what it enables us to do when we have it. And that allows us to have a really clear conversation um, in terms of like, you know, you know, allows us to see the value uh, very easily. So what we then do is, you know, it's up to the product manager to gather information internally, uh, talk to sales to try to talk to the rest of the, to, to GitLab internally to understand like the importance of this feature to the business of EE. Um, and then, you know, we, we have a, we, we ultimately like make a call on it for, as a product organization and whether or not we want to do that. Um, and then we schedule the work and then, uh, and then proceed from there. But um, but that's kind of the, the the overall process and kind of what I recommend users do. If that's something that they think is important to them in their organization and their efforts, um, go ahead and create an issue. We'll have a discussion about it, um, and it helps to really understand like the why behind that request to make that a little bit of an easier process. Awesome, that makes sense. I mean, I like the fact that uh, that, uh, that you included guidelines as well. I think the why, as you were saying, and articulating the workflows. It's why they need this feature as well. It's something that, that I can, I can um, um, essentially um, help them with. Um, awesome. And uh, I'll just share the screen because I found this. Um, so this is articulated in our handbook under this section, bringing features to lower tiers. So, you know, in full transparency, this is kind of the, the what, what we do behind the scenes. You know, we will take look, evaluate the issue. We'll evaluate it, you know, at our, at our, E team level, we'll create an issue describing the plan, and then we'll get this. We'll just gather feedback with the rest of the team at GitLab, you know, from a sales perspective, and then we'll, we'll uh, make a decision and update the the, the non confidential issue on like why we're moving forward with the decision or not. 
Awesome. Great. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else, David? Or that's all like, I have. Yeah, I you. saw that Gokhan just joined as well, but not sure if there are any other questions or comments. I don't see anything on the chat. Uh, well, Jeremy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, this recording will uh, be on the Hackathon channel and hopefully in the next couple of hours. But thanks again for your time. And uh, yeah, I look forward to community contributions to the Manage team. So. Yeah, thanks a lot for organizing this. I'm really excited. Yeah. And, and thanks to everyone for their contributions. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.